Okay, my friends, Roger Mudfiles from University. I'm very upset about this report that probiotics don't do much for most people's gut health, despite the hype. This was just put out, and this is on CNN Health. And they're saying, oh, this is not a big deal, and it doesn't really help much, and don't give them to kids in the emergency room. This, and and it, uh, it's not a good article. And they, it's, it's obviously tainted towards the professionals saying, oh, you have to come to us. This is an unregulated area. They don't really know what they're doing. There's no oversight. And they're going to want to put it under their auspices. I can almost guarantee you. See right here, they're talking about a $6 billion industry. Exceeds $6 billion this year. Guess what? The industry is largely unregulated. Marketing of the product often geared directly at consumers without providing direct and consistent proof of effectiveness, said the new guidelines. So they're going to make new guidelines. This has led to widespread use of probiotics with confusing evidence for clinical efficacy. That's because they haven't tested it. They haven't done any trials. They, they, they don't care about this because it can easily cure almost everything. Because I, I'm going to show you why I say that. All right, here's why I make the claims I make. Every single thing that is you starts by what you eat. You have to eat it, and then whatever you eat has to be broken down and converted into eyeballs and ears and skin and toenails and teeth and everything else. So how does that happen? There's a thing called the vagus nerve, and that runs entirely, entire all the way down here to your gut. Everything is attached into it. It's like a super highway of give and take signals. Now, what is that give and take signal? What, how does that work? In all of these places, you have resident bacteria. You have different bacteria that lives there. And there are thousands of different species, thousands. And primarily, they live in your gut is the most place and they that is the this is the production center for all the chemistry not all of it but most of it that runs your body and what happens is as your body needs food and it needs building materials and it needs whatever it needs to sustain sustain you in a healthy condition is provided by enzymes the enzymes do the chemistry to break down carrots and peas and, in my case, brownies and ice cream. <laughs> but it, it breaks down all of the things you eat. I don't care what you eat. It has to be broken down into a size that your body can deal with. And that's the job of the enzymes. And the enzymes are produced by bacteria. And the bacteria is getting signals. In my world, the bacteria is actually being told what to produce. They don't just squirt this stuff out all day long. Or some of it does. There is what they call an autonomic nervous system, which just continuously functions. Now, does it continuously function on like a homostasis basis where it just puts out a gram every hour of something? Or does it respond to commands? And I say they respond to commands. And those commands are given by the brain in response to some receptor. And a receptor in the body says to the brain, says, hey, I got an issue down here. The brain says, what's the matter? They say, well, I'm being invaded by some uh, Bactolacillus uh, respiratoris and it's got to go hurting my lungs. And he said, well, what's it doing to you? And he said, well, it's ca causing the, uh, some molecule to be destroyed. And he said, okay, well, I know how to deal with that. They send down to the bacteria down here, and they say, okay, go over and make some of this particular enzyme, and then squirt it into the bloodstream. It squirts that bloodstream into the bloodstream. It follows through the bloodstream with what they call a ligand, which is an attachment to that molecule. And finally, it bumps into the receptor molecule that says, hey, oh, you're the guy. Come on over here. And it says, oh, here I am. He says, here, give me an electron. I'll give you this, what's called an antibody or an antigen. Actually, the antigen is the part of the molecule that is the address. 
And it says, oh yeah, yeah, that's the right address. The antigen is the right antigen. Okay, you can come over here. And then it says, all right, you, and it opens up the membrane. It pops into the cell or wherever it is going through the membrane. And then it has its package with it, which is we, we call the antibody. And that is the part that goes in and does its work inside the cell. And then normally what happens inside the cell, the cell says, oh, I see who you are. And, oh, you're going to make a bunch of that stuff? Okay, I'll help you. And it, it takes that particular instruction set and says, all right, let's make a bunch of them. We'll send them out into the bloodstream to do that job. And that's what it does. And it sends out zillions of them until they're no longer required and they just stop making them. And so it's, it's a pretty intelligent system. And all of this vagus nerve is has to be to be able to not only give and take commands it has to be able to have the things that you know the products have to be in your body to be able to be dealt with you can't just say go make a bunch of stuff out of some spe specific metal and you don't have the metal in your body or because although some stuff it can actually create the molecules i believe now that it can actually convert molecules uh, you know actual atoms into other atoms by working on a nucleuses. I, I'm pretty sure now that it's not, you, you, there's, there's a lot to look at now, let me put it that way. I, there's a lot of things I'm thinking about, but I can absolutely, absolutely 100% tell you that whatever you eat is what you become. 100%. Now, does it have to be all things that are already have these correct molecules in them and all you need to do is just sort of filter them out of there? I don't know. Does it possibly be that whatever you eat, if it's close enough, your body can adjust it and make out the molecules you need and then you're fine? I don't know. So there's a lot to think about, but this is a very, very, very important. And this vagus nerve this this is where you're doing all your digestion and this is what happens you need this bacteria you need those enzymes you need those probiotics don't listen to this nonsense about forget probiotics absolute nonsense you need very good quality probiotics go to a good health health store and they'll they'll they'll, have, they'll know what's working and what isn't they're probably going to give you some bulk which will you know i take metamucil and uh, I take um, probiotics. I take uh, this stuff right here. Primal Defense. Now, I don't take it every single day, although I have been taking it every day because of this, pro you know, this COVID thing. But what, it, it, once you have a good, solid working gut, you're pretty okay. You, you don't really need probiotics unless you, you, your gut isn't working. But as soon as it stops working, you better damn well start taking them. That's my, that would be my advice. And, you know, again, they'll probably say, oh, you can't say this stuff because you're not a doctor. Well, I have no faith in doctors now. And I have no faith in any of the experts because it's always self-interest that I see now. Sorry to have to say that, but that's what I'm seeing. All right, I can tell you that antibiotics will literally destroy your immune system because it kills the good bacteria unless you get it back in the condition it should be you will get all kinds of problems and it'll lead to chronic disease i had to have two surgeries because of antibiotics kids get them all the time and and when they're very young it leads to autism we have a lot of success at this i want you people to post things what you're reactions have been with probiotics this is and i'm not saying give me anything special just tell me the truth what happened when you took probiotics what did you take them for and did they what did they do now this is talking about covid19 outbreak probiotics facts and information well it, let's just cut right down it goes through a whole batch of stuff about oh it doesn't mean much and so forth and it gets down to the bottom and it says here, the conclusions, there is no scientific rationale for using probiotics to protect, prevent, or treat COVID-19 and SARS-CoV-2 infection specifically. So they're just, that covers them. So now then, but however, 
Then they say this, nevertheless, we strongly support the reinforcement of our immune system by any scientifically valid strategy, which probiotics are, and help in maintaining a healthy gut microbial diversity and prevent intestinal dysbiosis in elderly infants and the general population is important. It is critical. It is the reason people get sick is that they have dysbiosis and they are not in good regular they're not dealing with the things they eat correctly. Combining a healthy and balanced diet together with prebiotics, probiotics, vitamin C, or vitamin supplementation, among others, could help us to reinforce our immune system during the COVID-19 outbreak. If you reinforce your immune system, you're not going to get COVID-19. That's my statement. I, I could be wrong, but I think that the people that aren't getting COVID-19 in general, have a good, healthy gut system. And the people, if you don't, if, if you've been taking probiotics and you've had COVID-19, I want to know about it. I've been asking over and over and over and zero. And I have like 86,000 people now or something like that. 80, 85, 86,000 people on my site. So I'm sorry. We need to get this understood. All right, and, and these probiotics are absolutely essential. I'm almost certain that one, but well, let me just leave it at this. Leave your comments, please. Thank you.